hey, friends and neighbors. Randomly trees coming at you. Just had a quick overnight camp out here with some friends that I used to ride with a long time ago. Actually, the guy that got me into dual sport, talked me into getting a CRF 250L when I was first starting to look into riding. And uh, they've been setting up some campouts out here in the Cascades. And uh, I haven't been able to make one. Something's always been going on. You know, it's like three, four hour trip for me to get out here, but I made this one, even if it was just overnight, and got to head back home for some stuff that's going on. Um, and for myself, really, but yeah, I had a really good night. Uh, beautiful spot up here, kind of near. Clay Elam, Clay Elam, I'm not sure how to say that, I always say it wrong, but yeah, really beautiful spots up here. I camped up here a long time ago, uh, actually the last time I rode with them we camped up here in a different spot and it was just beautiful. I've got some pictures of that from back then on my Instagram page, but So around, it's a, yeah, over 6,000 feet up here. Uh, and the ride took the hardest way up, man. It was, it was brutal. It was baby heads and embedded shit. And for a long time. So, but uh, we made it through it. I made it through. I came up and met them up here, so to me that's a, kind of a, a big deal because it really reminded me of Clement Mountain, although not quite as uphill. There was some, certainly some uphill, and quite challenging uh, for me to ride, so especially on a loaded DR650. I think I rode that once before on the CRF 250L when I packed a lot lighter and I don't remember it being that rocky because I, I don't remember ever traversing shit like that the way I traversed it yesterday but yeah anyway my voice is a little gravelly because I, <clears throat> I got some dust throat but this is pretty rutted out here it's gonna ride through it so anyway it was great to see those guys and catch up talk about motorcycling um, none of them were on a bike just me so it was it was just a relaxing sit down watch the sunset have a couple beers wake up sit on the ridge and Enjoy the cool breeze. It started to get hot if you're not on the right up against the ridge because we we're kind of sheltered from the wind. But in the wind, it's chilly. Like we had to step back even in the sun. So, yeah, headed home now. Got probably four hours. Saw a giant buck yesterday. I wish I had kept the. I wish I had the camera on it when I was riding up. If I'd have known what the terrain would have been like, I would have turned the camera on, but I saw a huge deer. It was not an elk, it was a deer, and it's the biggest one I've seen since I've moved to Washington. Last time. I was up here, the last day of camping was when I was up here. It was at least seven years ago. I remember coming down this part on the 250L. Ooh, somebody 
vista right there. There's people camping back here. Yeah, camp camping. Uh, sorry, on the 250L. Um, riding down this and coming out at down by Ellensburg and. turning homeward and having to ride slab the whole way back on the little 250 because I had to go put in a bunch of paperwork for for my job because I was switching jobs and there was a lot of a lot of paperwork involved and uh, yeah I had like three days to do it and our trip was going to be at least another three or four days and had to uh, you know, hightail it out of there real quick. Is this that van we saw? No. Nice spot. There's all kinds of great spots back here. Really pretty back here. You can see there was fire, uh, forest fire back here a while ago, a long time ago. And some of the trees are still standing, but it's funny. Some of the some of the live trees you could tell were burned because uh, half of them's dead and half of them's still alive. It's really kind of it's really interesting area to camp because of that. And then of course you see all the the new growth coming up, all the new life coming up. And behind the forest fire, and the uh, the wildlife starting to be back around. I mean, we we've, we've seen a lot of wildlife just in the past. What is it? Not not even like 18 hours. I've seen a lot of wildlife, different birds and a pheasant and owls and a bunch of hawks and like chipmunks all over the place and that deer of course and coyotes heard them didn't see them but definitely saw some coyote scat <coughs> see there goes a he was carrying something fairly big i wonder if he's oh they wouldn't be nesting at this point with a baby maybe i don't know i don't know what he had big old pine cone or something. There's all these cattle guards. <laughs> and this bit of road is called, I can't remember, it's some kind of twisties. They call it on the map. Really neat. I think I want to go right. Yeah. So those guys. up here like a lot of traffic this morning it's a lot of traffic for a Saturday I, well not for a maybe not for a Saturday but a lot of traffic for as remote as it is back where we were on that that rough road it was I think 40 50 vehicles passed us just this morning it's about noon now we got up we were up and around by six, and uh, a lot of bikes. Seems like a lot of like dirt bikes, not not uh, dual sports, which I didn't think we're allowed to ride back here. But oh well, you know it's probably. I, I don't think there's a lot of enforcement on that, but a lot of like KTM and Husqvarna is going by. I heard a two-stroke. I didn't see what that was.
road through the area I like to camp in Quilcene. There's a bit of a paved road that is in between two gravel sections. And it's nice, it's long and twisty. It's like five or 10 miles or something like that. So I'm gonna bust out of here and then head back west. Probably take 90, which isn't fun, but I'll check the, check the shit out. This way out is definitely better than the way I came in. Some of those other bikes were just plowing through that real rocky shit. They were just flying through. I I can't do that. I'm not I'm not quite skilled enough. But I did come through. I I am I'm glad for myself that I pushed through that. There was only one couple spots I had to stop and rest before tackling the next bit. Uh, but it was that yeah, was a challenge. It was very very rough and kicking the wheels around on the stock suspension and my old out of shape ass was really winded after part of, not I shouldn't say winded but I, I was you know it was good for me to rest it, it helped and then I kind of duck walked maybe about five feet over some because where I stopped wasn't ideal of course and then I kind of duck walked over some shit and then maybe about five feet uh, and then kind of picked my next line and just went for it and that was the last time I stopped until I got to where I thought camp was going to be and just kind of scope then I saw where the trucks were so yeah now we're just coasting but yeah Dolores is just a great bike I mean, DR650, man, you can't, you can't argue that it is a great bike. I rode it to Rocky Mountain Roll last weekend, and we went Lolo Pass, like a, 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 up, up Highway 12 over Lolo Pass, and I was following, um, well, on the way to Kamaya, Kamii, Idaho, I was following a Harley and a F800GS, and they were, you know, they, they could obviously get on it more than I could, um, but I was, for the most part, keeping up, and, uh, you know, going 70, that's really chunky here, we'll just go right through it, ooh, 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 ooh. Um, look at that, ooh, look at the road too, idiot, um, you know, they, they they were able to get ahead of me quite a ways and you know I was loaded down so but you know 70 75 most of the way and then up over a low low pass I was with uh, um, it was uh, Paco Pete on the f800 and uh, Lila from Gma rides on her Harley and then Oliver uh, one quick 26 on his T7 and uh, I was able to keep up pretty dang well and you know coming home it was uh, we came back over Lolo Pass again st stayed in Kamii again on the way back and then you know parted ways with uh, Lila and, and Oliver went went home to Spokane and then Pete and I just slabbed it on 90 the whole way home and you know I, I was nervous about doing that kind of pavement riding on Dolores but she just rocked it it was I was fairly comfortable um, you know, obviously it's a big thumper, so going that fast, you're gonna get some vibration. I'm on full on knobbies, so that was a vibration. But comfort wise, I, I I didn't really start feeling it until we got to Seattle. And then we were in the I-5 
BS traffic. Um, so yeah, really happy with the with the bike. And the more I ride it, the more confident I am that um, she's she can do anything that I need to do. Ooh. Side by side and shit, so I better watch out. Look at that, there's the wind farms. Beautiful day, but it is getting warmer as we come down this hill. But if you weren't careful, you would just ride right off that. Straight down that hill. Oosh. That's steep. You might hold it up for a little bit. But it's all kinds of brush and shit. It'll be fun to go through, but it looks like there's some glass down there, of course. We found a bunch of nails in like this impromptu fire pit that's makes me really sketchy about riding through some of these spots. People just burn pallets and stuff with screws all through and then the screws lay there waiting to pop somebody's tire. And me, on this trip, I brought all my tools and my spoons, but I didn't bring my damn spare tube. Well, all right, my friends. It's gonna be slab from here. A quick descent, I'm at 2,600 feet. Now I believe it's just a kind of a hop, skip, and a jump to 90. So I'll pull off up here, get the camera off, and gonna call it a day at home so, thanks for watching everybody ride safe have a great day